Finding a product to sell is potentially the hardest part of anybody's journey when selling on Amazon or online. Well, in this video, we're going to be talking about a new way of how you can do product research for products that are trending, that are in demand, and that you can start selling online in 2022. Are you ready? Let's get to work. If this is your first time watching a video on this channel, hi, my name is Kristen and I'm the founder of Amazon Sellers Society and Sellers Society. And I'm completely obsessed with e-commerce, very much focused on the Middle East. In this video, I'm trying to address a problem that I find is maybe the hardest part or the first stepping stone for anyone, the first hurdle for anyone that wants to get started selling online. What should I sell? What products should I sell? We've got a really, really interesting video on the channel that's quite popular. You can watch that here. It's the traditional way of how you can do product research for Amazon. But in this video, let's talk a little bit different strategies, especially for the year 2022. And what can you do with these strategies and where you need to sell and what options you have of selling online anywhere in the world, definitely in uh, the Middle East as well. First thing is, you're not going to like this if you don't like social media, but the first advice would be to check TikTok. Yes, TikTok. Right now, through smartphones, through apps like TikTok, Instagram, and so many others, we have direct access to the actual consumer, to the person that's actually buying these products. We can figure out who they are and what they're buying. It's unheard of, literally unheard of. So if you just go on TikTok and you search hash hashtags like TikTok make me buy it, as an example, you can do something similar on Instagram as well. You'll find so many, um, so many TikToks, so many reels, so many posts even from people posting products that they've bought because of TikTok. But guess where they, they bought these products from? normally, mostly, you're going to find that they bought these products off of Amazon. So this is a way to, to, to directly understand what the consumer is actually consuming. Bear in mind, keep watching the video till the end because I'm going to tell you what you need to do with this information to validate that you can actually sell these products. So not just finding a TikTok, somebody saying that they bought something, then you should go ahead and sell it. No, of course, it takes a little bit more research than that. You can also look on uh, social media platforms. My favorite would be Pinterest. Lots of fantastic information on Pinterest. You can search things like Amazon must-haves, find a lot of great bloggers that have created these really cool um, blog posts about products that are very much in demand on Amazon. If you have a particular product or a particular niche that you're trying to focus on or a particular category, then you can search things like um, Amazon kitchen must-haves as an example. So you can search more and more and find some unique ideas. Option number two, or another option for you to do product research would be through Alibaba itself. Most of you already know what Alibaba is. Alibaba is the number one sourcing website for international sellers and, interna and people who are buying products and they want to sell online. You can find suppliers from all over the world, predominantly from China, but you can look on Alibaba itself to figure out what's actually trending. So I'm on the alibaba.com main page and I'm looking for a way to find the trending products. Sometimes you'll find them right here in the, um, at the top of the page, but today it's not here. So we're going to want to scroll down to the bottom of the page. We want to find basically products that are trending and also products that have live streams. I love live streams. It's a really cool way to see the actual product. Let's click on view more. And it's going to take us to the Alibaba.com live streams where you're going to find all of these suppliers basically doing live videos and demonstrating the products that they find are being, well, the products that are very much uh, in demand. So you can search for things depending on uh, the type of product that you are searching and a lot of things. Let me find something that is interesting so I can show it to you. So I'm looking at this supplier that is selling um and as you can see here in the live stream video you can actually 
Um, if th this is a replay, but if it was a live stream, I would be able to communicate with them and ask them any questions, which is pretty, pretty cool. And you can see the products right there in front of you as well, not just through images. And then you can choose whatever product they are talking about and then click on it and go and purchase it or negotiate and ask for further prices. And definitely you want to order a sample, of course, but you can check exactly what the supplier has. So this is a really, really interesting, um, uh, uh, obviously uh, baby products are fantastic. Silicon baby products are very, very popular and very much in demand. Here they're selling even uh, teething toys made out of silicone cups, all types of things. The supplier is great. You can also go and check the supplier's page to find a little bit more about the supplier and all of the products that they are selling and everything else. Obviously now, as I'm filming this video, it's Chinese New Year, so most of the suppliers are closed. So we're gonna have to wait until after the Chinese New Year. Okay, so now you found some really cool, interesting products using these two methods. Should you just find, or should you just get any product that you find on TikTok and sell it directly online? Of course not you need to go through val validation. You need to figure out if that product is really gonna be popular on wherever you decide to, to sell. Now, with that being said, before we jump into what you need to do in order to validate that product and to you know, try to remove any potential risks there might be, let's talk about where you're gonna sell because it very much depends where you're gonna sell, depends on how you decide to validate the product. There are a lot of options, that's the good news. There are a lot of options for you to sell online in 2022. Let's talk about the four main options. Option number one, your own website. Definitely the most popular of those is Shopify. Arguably, there's, there's been a lot of uh, articles at the end of 2021 saying that Shopify is actually a much bigger marketplace if we were to make it, if we were to consider it a marketplace, it's actually much bigger or at least the level of Amazon. Shopify is fantastic. However, I would say selling on your own website requires you to have a little bit of knowledge, uh, especially when it comes to marketing and a little bit of a technical background. It does require you to have some time as well on your hands because it requires a lot of other things and a lot of other skills that normally you don't need to have when you're starting out on Amazon. But Shopify is also a fantastic way for you to sell the, your own products without competing against anybody else because it's your own website. You're not selling on Amazon and competing against other sellers. Additionally, it's a great, um, it's a great revenue stream for anyone that has a following. So if you currently have followers, if you are an influencer, if you are anyone that's a little bit famous and you have people that follow you, then you can sell products on your own website, complimentary products for yourself. And you don't have to sell them on Amazon. You have your own audience that can go directly into your website. Definitely perfect for merchandise as well. Option number two, is similar to option number one, I would say, but it is actually much better on paper, in theory. So it's drop shipping. I'm sure if you are uh, familiar with e-commerce, you've checked out drop shipping and you've heard about drop shipping. However, if you don't know what drop shipping means, it's basically the same concept. You create your own website, but the cool thing is you don't have any physical products, so you don't need to pay for inventory. And that's why dropshipping is so interesting and that's why it became so popular a few years ago because you can start a dropshipping store with really not a very big budget because all you really need is a website, you find suppliers, you add those products on your website and whenever, and whenever somebody purchases the product, a customer purchases your product, you go directly to the manufacturer, you purchase the product from the manufacturer and you dropship it over to the customer minimizing the need for you to have bulk inventory, which is fantastic. However, the problem with dropshipping and why we've seen popularity for dropshipping drop is because uh, there is a very long wait time. So customers need to wait sometimes four weeks for their products to arrive. And with the alternative of getting your products within one to two days as a customer, why would you want to wait four weeks? And because the website that most uh, dropshippers use, which is AliExpress, is actually being used by consumers themselves. So AliExpress is now very, very well known. Customers can go to AliExpress directly without having to go to your website and paying you additional money. So that's why we've seen dropshipping 
drop a little bit in popularity, but it's still something that you can do. Third uh, option is, I think it's a mixture of the, the, the first two, which is your own website as well as drop shipping, and that's print on demand, P-O-D. I did do a video about print on demand a while ago, if you're interested with this concept, do let me know. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. Tell me POD so that I'll, I will do some more information about print on demand. I love this way of selling, especially if you are a creative person. Um, you don't have to be an artist, but just being a little bit creative, being a little bit fashionable makes it fantastic. Print on demand is exactly what, it, what, what this business is. So you have your own website, you put those designs, most, most, it's mostly anything that can be printed, t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, mouse pads, phone cases, anything that you can print a design on. So you find a print on demand service provider, you hook them up to your website, and then when a customer purchases, let's say a t-shirt with your design on it, the print on demand service provider prints it on demand and then sends it over to the customer. It doesn't take as long as drop shipping, but mostly takes about seven to 10 days. And you can, it's an interesting thing that you can actually tell the customer that you're printing this for them on demand, which is, which is equally as cool because customers are willing to wait a little bit longer when they know it's a freshly made t-shirt. And um, it's, it's a great way to go into e-commerce if, if you are that type of person that loves these types of products. And finally, definitely Amazon FBA. We're focusing on private label, meaning selling your own products, adding your own logo and your own branding on those products. Amazon is a very successful way or a very easy way for anyone to start selling online easy because it doesn't require a lot of technical skills and it doesn't require a lot of time. It doesn't mean it doesn't require time. It doesn't require a lot of time, but of course it requires time. Any business, any real business requires time. The time that you're going to be spending on Amazon is mostly dedicated to things that people like and people enjoy, marketing and sales, advertising as well, and managing your account and not worrying about uh, technical stuff or rather a little bit more boring stuff like logistics, customer service, all of those things Amazon are going to handle for you. So that's the advantage of it. So if you can treat Amazon as a springboard to selling on your own website because you will need to spend money on advertising on Amazon, but you're not going to spend as much money as you were if you have a brand new website that nobody knows and you don't have a following. So you are going to spend money on ads on Amazon where customers are logging in to purchase products. So it is a little bit of a warm audience, like we say in advertising. So it does have its pros and it does have its cons, of course, like any type of business. You, it is more expensive to sell on Amazon because Amazon is the platform and you have to pay commission or what is known as a referral fee to Amazon because you're selling products on Amazon. So it's maybe the equivalent of selling in a very, very well-known shopping center versus selling in your own standalone store in a street. So that would be the difference of selling on Amazon versus selling on your own website. Now that you know all of those four different systems or four different ways of selling products, once you decide which one you want to do, now you can properly validate the products that you just found using these methods or any other method. So validating a product that you want to sell on Amazon would be completely different than validating a product that you want to do print on demand or if you want to sell it on your own website. Focusing on Amazon, because that's what we love to focus on on this website, on this uh, channel. So focusing on Amazon and how you would validate a product on Amazon. Number one, keyword research, keyword demand. So we want to focus and we want to make sure that there is demand for these products. How do you do that? By figuring out what the search volume on the main keywords is. If you find a high enough search volume, then you should be happy because you know people are actively searching for this product. So finding a product that has a main keyword that has, for, for an ex as an example, a thousand searches a month would be different than finding a product that has a main keyword that has 50,000 searches a month. So this is how you would want to, this is how you would want to go about it because we want to minimize the risk. We want to minimize the risk of failure, basically. So you can, you can use tools 
If you are selling in um, anywhere in the world, especially in, the, in Europe, as well as in the US, you can, there are lots of recognizable tools such as Jungle Scout and Helium 10. If you're selling in the Middle East, you can use a tool called egro.io, a new tool that I haven't used myself, but I've heard about is amz.1. You can also use that, or you can use manual research, basically checking competitors, looking at their main BSR, and focusing and seeing if it is within reason. So BSR is the best seller rank. A product that has a BSR of 100 is selling very well, as an example, a pro versus a product that has a BSR of 2000 is potentially selling nothing. So you wanna look at the main BSR in order to figure out how much demand is for that product and you want to make sure that you follow it for at least 10 to 15 days to see if there's any differences and if it's actually good. I would suggest to choose a product that has at least, for the main category, it has at least a BSR of 500. That would put it, I'm talking here for the Middle East, that would put it at a good, good enough uh, sales for you to look at. Now, after you check the validity of these keywords, number two, you wanna look at your competitors because if you're selling on Amazon, you're obviously competing with other people and you wanna make sure that you can win that competition, that you can win that fight. So you wanna look at your competitors and you want to look at two main things. What, are, what is the average selling price? Is the average selling price worth it for you? If everybody is selling at 20 dirhams, 15 dirhams, is that something that you want to go into? Do you want to have that much, you know, low margins? What is your plan? What is your strategy? So that's the first thing that you want to look at. And the second thing, and I think that's very important, is you want to see who is actually selling. Are you competing against very well-known brand names? I wouldn't want to compete against Nike and Adidas. These are very recognized brand names, no matter how good the quality of any product is. It's very tough to compete against these brand names who are recognized, well-known, have spent billions of dollars on advertising, have superstar uh, people endorsing them. It's gonna be tough to compete against these types of brands, even though Amazon is an equal playing field, but still there is a little bit of common sense. So if you are competing against these brand names, I would suggest that you just leave that product. If not, if you're just, there's nobody really that much recognized that you're competing against, then that would be a good idea for you to become that recognized brand. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you check our website, assmiddleeast.org, as well as our uh, software, sellerssociety.io. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. Which one was your favorite tip and which one are you going to be implementing for when you want to look for your next product. I'll see you in another video with more information. Bye.